I'm Beth Stevenson. I'm here today with my daughter, Trisha Bowers, who is a reading specialist. She has a, a degree in elementary education from Brigham Young University and a master's degree from Arizona State University in literacy and lit, uh, language and literacy. Um, so she's going to give us some tips today on helping a new reader learn to read. So, Trisha, what are some resources that you recommend for a beginning reader? These little books that you can get in levels, um, beginning levels, will get you through the time when the child can't quite read regular storybooks that you would have in your in your library yet, and they just need simple repetitive text. So you can see they have. Uh, cute little pictures. They have clever endings even in the early levels and they use a lot of the uh, sight words that kids need to practice but it's much more enjoyable to practice it in a real book. It's more enjoyable for the child. Um, very repetitive storylines and, and simple and these you can get a pack of 25 little stories. You can also get um, guided science readers, which allow them, they're little non-fiction books about animals and various topics, but that allows them to get some practice with non-fiction also, um, which is important even for beginning readers. And uh, those are an excellent resource for kids to get some good reading practice that is at a very simplified level. If a child is struggling with a book, what's the best way to help him? Well, when children struggle with reading, oftentimes um, we focus on phonics and saying, sound the word out, you know, look at the letters. And that is one of the ways that they can certainly figure out what the word is. But there are other cueing systems that are beneficial. And um, really the most important one is meaning and comprehension. And so it's great to ask a question like, what would make sense here? What word do you think it could be? And that will get them thinking about the text and considering what would fit right there rather than only looking at the letters. So that will actually increase their comprehension as well as pointing out to them that the purpose of reading is to understand and to comprehend what you're reading. Well, um, and the pictures are a cue too. Yeah. And they, these little early readers have pick a picture right, on every page that's right. going to hint at what it is. It gives them a hint, exactly. And that helps them through some of the words that they may not be familiar with right off the bat because they can um, identify from the picture what's going on. And the other cueing system is the grammar, just helping them recognize would this word fit in this place, maybe having them go back to the beginning of the sentence and read it through and say, what word could fit there and um, those three things together can help them to get through a text that um, otherwise they may be over focused on phonics and another a problem that can happen when they're overly focused on phonics is that they start just reading words without thinking about what they're reading at all and you can have a child read a whole book and not have understood or or considered anything that they actually <laughs> were reading the whole time. Or gained any benefit from it either, for that matter. Right, right. Um, so, how do you help a child who can read but does not want to? Someone who's really hesitant to engage with reading. Mm -hmm. You want to develop the child's identity as a reader. And that is kind of a broad thing, but it can be from things like reading together as a family, um, reading aloud to your child from the time they're little, um, even talking about books and, and plots and stories that you enjoy or things that you would like to read or things that you think they would enjoy. Um, just making reading a positive thing. and. Uh, well, what type of reading, are, what are you going to read to a, an early reader? Are you going to read them this type of a book that's just a super simple one? Or are you going to read them something more advanced? Or um, I would definitely pick um, classics to read to young children. 
Um, I am reading the Little House on the Prairie series with my six-year-old son and he loves it and his vocabulary is becoming enriched and it's fun to hear him use phrases and, and words that he hears in, in those books. Yeah. And, um, and yeah, even picture books, you know, look for books that you as a parent enjoy reading. They should be clever. <laughs> <laughs> they should be, you know, often there are a lot of books out there that aren't exactly high quality literature, but there are a lot that are, and they should use vocabulary words that are unfamiliar to the child because that's how their vocabularies will grow. And uh, they should use, you know, little more complicated grammar and things like that just so that that's their exposure to those to those things and also they should have great stories and in my opinion great pictures also like you know if a i think the book needs all of those things to be considered an excellent work of literature yeah well for a child <laughs> i'm beyond right. picture books frankly <laughs> You might find you like them. <laughs> <laughs> well, I do. I know that when I was picking, when I was a young girl, you know, I loved to pick books that had adventures and magic and things like that in them. Mm -hmm. But what about a child who does not think of themselves as a good reader? They can read, but they mm -hmm. think of themselves as a poor reader. Mm -hmm. I think the trick with that is to do some research and find, especially if you can find a series of books that are right at their level. You want something that they can read about 90% of it with no trouble at all. And maybe they struggle a little bit with 10% of the words, for example, but, but it's pretty easy for them. And you can kind of help them with some of the more challenging words. Um, but find something that they're interested in, you know, whether it's a series about fantasy or, you know, any, any kind, whatever their interests are, um, let that be your guide. Okay. But right at their level, something, right. not something that's going to challenge them and make it and be hard, right. but something that they can just enjoy without uh, right. struggling through it. Yeah. And so some kids, you may need to back it off a little bit, you, you know, even if they're a third or fourth grader, if they're really struggling with books at that level, find some interesting nonfiction is a great way to go with that too. Find a topic that they're interested in, find a book that's at a first or second grade level and just let them have some success with that, you know, help them to find a stack of books about dinosaurs or whatever floats their boat. And yeah. Um, well, how do you know what level? Um, how do you know what level is appropriate for your child? I mean, can a librarian give you information on that, or possibly? How, how do you know? Well, if your child is in school, you can of course ask the teacher. Um, but another thing that you can do is just listen to them read. You know, a few pages of a book, and just kind of take note: Are they struggling or stumbling over? you know, very few words. If so, that's probably a good level for them. Are they really struggling? If so, they're, it's probably a little hard and that might be better as a read aloud, you know, and let them hear it and get interested in it and then maybe they'll be ready to read it themselves. Like taking turns reading, a, I read a page, the child reads a page, like that. Right, you, you know, can do that. that. Yeah, another thing to do is just a shared reading where you're, you're choral reading it together. You're both reading the words and that helps a kid who's not that confident to try but with the confidence that you are going to supply the correct word if they're struggling oh, yeah. with it. So that you can push them up a little bit to a slightly higher level just by giving them that support. Okay. Well, when you're when you're hearing a child read to you and they say the wrong word, they read it wrong. Mm -hmm. Um, is it best to let it go or is it best to stop them and point out that they didn't read it right and mm -hmm. you know maybe point to the word and say is that what it says or is it better just to let them go? That's a good question. Um, it depends in my mind on what the error was. If they read something that didn't make sense at all in the context you would say now wait a minute can you reread that sentence did that make sense to you and and just clue them in that, that it should make sense. Um, if it made sense but it wasn't the correct word, if they were creating their own 
interpretation. <laughs> like they said rabbit instead of bunny. Right, right, that's a good example. Then I would point to the letters in that instance and say, does this say bunny you know, or, or does this say rabbit, whichever, and just point their attention back to the cueing system that they were ignoring at the moment oh, and, okay. and help them that way. Okay. Um, anything else that uh, is helpful for children who are hesitant to read? I think one key that I would say is try to make as much of their reading education and experience based on reading real books versus um, worksheets or other forms of sort flashcards, flash flashcards and worksheets and those kind of things. Those are okay for practice. I don't use them a lot, but um, but you really want them to be reading things that have meaning, not not reading made up words, not reading you know things like that that aren't because you want them to understand that we read for meaning. That's the purpose. Yeah. Okay. That's good. All right. Well, thank you so much. I appreciate your helping us with that, Tricia. Um, thank you for watching. I hope you'll in you'll uh, subscribe. See the snake. It has fangs. Ooh, look at those fangs. Actually, mommy, right now they don't look that sharp. Because you see, like, see that, like, ball down there? Yeah. I was thinking that ball might be a blob of venom. It's a venom. Venom is the poison that comes out of them. Yeah. I don't want to touch that snake. Next, you can really see those sharp teeth at the back. Yeah, I can. See the claws. Yeah. Turtle. It has claws. See the crocodile. How do you know that that word is crocodile, not alligator? Alligator would be, be an A. Oh, how do you think he would say that? Oh, no! <laughs> my meatball rolled off my plate. <laughs> oh, no! It rolled past my car. It rolled everywhere. No. Oh, no. It rolled past my book. Uh, book. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> oh, no. it all past my block. Oh, no, it rolled past my t bear. How did you know that was bear, not teddy bear? It started to say teddy. Yeah, but how did you know that it didn't say teddy? I don't know, I just remembered it. Is there a T right there? No. No? No, so it couldn't be teddy bear, huh? Gone. Oh no! It reappears my cat. Oh, my cat! No more meatball. <laughs> <All right. laughs>